All right, our, our series text, we're teaching on faith foundations or the ABCs of faith. And our four passages of scripture, now remember this is bring your Bible. Mm-hmm. So uh, make sure you have, the, you have your Bible with you. Habakkuk 2.4, uh, behold his soul which is lifted up is not upright in him, but the just shall live by his faith. And then we, uh, we read from Romans 1.17. And now I'm going to go through these real quick. We'll li- are you going to list these scriptures there, Julie? Okay. We're going to list these places so you can write those down and, and go back if you need to later in your notes. Uh, Romans 1, 17, For therein is the righteousness of God revealed from faith to faith, as it is written, the just shall live by faith. Galatians 3, 11, But that no man is justified by the law in the sight of God, it is evident, for the just shall live by faith. Mm-hmm. And then Hebrews 10, 38, now the just shall live by faith, but if any man draw back, my soul shall have no pleasure in him. So we've talked about how we get faith, and uh, we've talked about the difference between uh, faith and hope, talked about what faith is. Um, and so we, we were, uh, last week we were doing faith versus hope, and then and actually like the week before, and then last week was faith sees the answer. This week we're going to talk about the difference between faith and feelings. Faith and feelings. Feelings. Nothing more than feelings. All right. I forgot who did that song. It's good. Oh, okay. (laughs) You forgot too. Uh, Who? Yeah. 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 It might be Barry Manilow. I don't remember. (laughs) <laughs> all right so uh, you know we misinterpret sometimes you know for our feelings and I tell you a lot of people uh, there's a lot of times you hear people say things well God told me God showed me God said God and a lot of times what they say God told me God showed me God said is just their feelings yeah right they had a whim. It wasn't, it wasn't the Spirit of God. And if you actually, how do you know that? Because if you go study that and prove it out with the Word, it don't bear out with the Word. You know? Um, God don't tell you not to tithe. <laughs> you know? Um, thank you for your enthusiasm. God don't tell you don't go to church. Right. I, God told me I didn't need to go to church. Well, no, your feelings did. Probably because you don't like somebody at church. Uh-oh. <laughs> Now, if you want any more on that one, go back to Sunday where we preached on love, and you'll enjoy that sermon right much. Hallelujah. Wigglesworth, uh, um, Smith Wigglesworth, the great apostle um, of faith and, and from England, once said this. He said, I cannot understand God by feelings. I cannot understand the Lord Jesus Christ by feelings. I can only understand God the Father and Jesus Christ by what the Word says about them. God is everything the Word says He is. We need to get acquainted with Him through the Word. So, uh, a lot of times people be going, you know, uh, uh, I've heard Dad Hagen say things back, you know, somebody come out and said, oh, if you, could just, if you could just get me back to where I once was, I just need to just go on and die. He thought, oh my, they've done some major sin. They've done some major thing. And get to talking to them and find out that they just don't feel God. Mm-hmm. I'm going to tell you something. Now, you, your husbands don't try this. This is, this is not a recommendation. <laughs> but just if you got up tomorrow morning and looked at your wife and said, I don't feel married. It wouldn't matter how you feel. You've got a, you've got a legal binding contract that says you are. <laughs> and uh, you probably would be in, investing into the part of that contract that says till death do us part. Yeah, you start telling her I don't feel married. <laughs> <laughs> you feel this? <laughs> yeah. I don't know about Gina but I know what Janie means when she says you feel this. It's a cast iron frying pan. Then one of the 10 inch ones you know the, you know, the nice good sized chicken one you could cook. Oh anyway. Yes sir buddy. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, I'll, 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 I'll take care of your feelings. You know, a lot of people, um, uh, a lot of marriages break up because people don't feel like they're in love anymore. Uh-huh. They don't have the euphoria. They don't have the feelings of, of you know, ecstatic, you know, b- uh, butterflies in their stomach when they see them. And, oh, I'm, I don't, I'm not in love anymore. Well, yeah, those are feelings. You, know, you, you, you don't base, base a marriage on, on your feelings. You base it on a commitment. That's right. Because right. see, the commitment will keep you through the times when there's no feelings. Yeah, right. Well, we don't know God by our feelings. 
There's a lot of Christians who don't, who, who don't feel like God's with them. He said, I'll never, but see the word says, I'll never leave you nor forsake you. Mm -hmm. So faith is not moved by feelings. I've heard Dad Hagen say this. He said, you know, he said, there are times, he said, um, well, actually, this, this particular case where this person said, you know, I, I just don't feel saved. Or I feel like the, the Lord's with me. He said, my goodness. He said, you got me up early. In the now, he used, to, he used to, if you go back and listen to him, he used to stay up to 2, 3 o'clock in the morning praying and studying, and he'd sleep till 10 o'clock, 10 or 11 o'clock the next day. He was just, a, he was just nocturnal. And, and, and quite frankly, I'm the same way. I'd rather stay up till 2, 2 30 in the morning, uh, listening to the Word and, and, and meditating and studying, and, and sleep late than I would to get up early. Oh, I hear you. Amen. Now, well, people say, well, the, you know, the, the, the Bible talks about they either rise up early. Yeah, it also talks about those who were in the midnight hour. I mean, you know, in the midnight watches. So, you, you, you know, you can have it, you can have it both ways. So you know not one's better than the other. It's just what works best for you. Well, this person came by about 8 o'clock in the morning, woke him up, tell him they didn't feel saved. They didn't feel, they didn't feel the Lord's presence. He said, my goodness. He said, if I was going by feelings, you got me up out of bed. I'm tired. You know, wore out. been working. You know, I'm, I'm tired. Needed my sleep. He said, if I was going by my feelings, I'd have you pray for me. <laughs> Amen. And I've been there. I've been, I've stood into the pulpit where I thought, my God, if I, if I was going by feelings, I'd have the whole congregation lay hands on me and help get me saved. <laughs> I'm telling you, because if you go by feelings, you know. But we see, the life of faith isn't based on how you feel. I'm going to tell you something. There's a, you know, I grew up classical Pentecostal. We didn't think God was moving until we could feel oh, the goosebumps. Shaking. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know what? Sometimes, sometimes some of that's just not God. That's just flesh. <laughs> I've, been, I've been there when it was God. I've been there and it looks the same. sounds yeah. the same. Yeah. But you know in your spirit it's not God. That's true. Amen. It's not, you know, just, just because you ran last service don't mean you're running this service. As a matter of fact, uh, I sat in a number of Dad Hagen's meetings when one night they were, I mean, they, it was a Holy Ghost breakout. Wow, it was the Holy Ghost. Next night somebody tried to get it going. He wouldn't even let it. He just stopped teaching teach a Bible lesson. And everybody's waiting. Oh, there was no move of the Spirit. No, I'm going to tell you, it's, you can be just as anointed to teach, teach or preach the Word as you are to run and shout and jump a pew. You, we just got to learn to grow up and understand and discern between what, what the Spirit of God's doing and not be moved by our feelings. Now, um, I remember when I first got saved. Um, now, we were, in, we were in a Pentecostal church in our hometown. We had a group in there, and they had their own little, I don't know why they call them cottage prayer meetings. I don't, I don't know why they, you know, the term, I don't know where the term came from, but you know, if you met at somebody's house, there was a few people, a couple people that had, you meet at their house and they call it a cottage prayer meeting and they, and they didn't live in a cottage. <laughs> I guess if I was in Cape Cod and you were in, in, in a New England cottage, we could call it the cottage prayer meeting. We're in Greenville, North Carolina in a one floor, one story ranch. Yeah. Should, should call it a ranch prayer meeting. <laughs> anyway, we had cottage prayer meetings. And we go over there, and I'm going to tell you something. I mean, we first, we first got saved. We were so hungry for God. You, and, and this is why it's so important we teach the Word and teach people. And pastors have some gumption, you know. But this, this little group was meeting, and, they were, and the pastor was, didn't, wasn't invited. He didn't show up. You know, they had their little thing going on. He probably should have come to see what was going on so he could straighten it out. And uh, they'd always prophesied. We had a prayer chair at the cottage prayer meeting. We had a prayer chair. Yep. And then, you know, you set somebody in the prayer chair and everybody would lay hands on them and everybody would prophesy on them. And I, I've, I've always noticed a lot of times when these, these out of order prophecy meetings, quote prophecy meetings, it's always good stuff. Yeah. Oh, you're going to go, you're going to travel the world, you're going you're gonna to win nations to Jesus, you're going to walk on water. I mean, you're going to raise 500,000 people from the dead. I mean, you're just, you're the most awesome thing since peanut butter and sliced bread and Jesus called you to do all this stuff. And, you know, and, and then what happens is you start getting hooked on that. And I remember we, we, we'd been in this meet, we'd go in this meet for a few weeks. We'd just gotten saved. Now, Janie was, Janie was more, more, more spiritual in tune than I was. And I grew up in church. She grew up heathen. And uh, she, she got where she didn't like going, but we, we'd still go because she'd follow me. She would follow me anywhere I went. And um, I remember I went after about six or seven weeks, I didn't get a word from the Lord. Oh, no. I'm telling you, I had a rough week. <laughs> I didn't get a word from the Lord. See, I was, I was being trained to be moved by the emotion and the feeling of getting some kind of special word. That was the best thing ever happened to me was I got cut off 
And the Lord, you know, Janie, Janie, after a couple times of that, Janie says, I'm not going back there anymore. And she just wouldn't go back anymore. Of course, then, then we were deemed unspiritual because we weren't showing up for the, the laying on hands on everybody, prophesy everybody meeting, you know, that kind of thing. And, um, and, and, you know, and those people caused problems in the church. They, they, tore, they kind of tore the church up, started their own church. Uh, they, were, they, were, they, they were a little flaky, uh, to say the least. They, they, were, they were hooked up with a group that believed you could prophesy over anybody anytime. They just had the whole, the, 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 the kind of, the person they, they liked, the minister they liked, would come into a church service and preach and say, Have you ever prophesied to everybody? Everybody find somebody, pair up, turn around, lay your hands on, prophesy over them. Now, this, see, all, all the stuff where I was kind of led and up and down stuff, because before I went to Raymond, I went to Raymond and found out what the Word said. I came back, I wouldn't, I'd just walk out of the service if that was going on. Amen. Because the Bible says lay hands on that no man. Suddenly, I know it's talking about ordination, but I'll tell you what, I don't want some bozo with empty hands laying them on my head. And got goofy devils hanging around them. <clears throat> so I just, I just, I just didn't participate in that. I stopped. I grew up. I, I learned that I was, I lived by faith and not by a special word this way. Now, if God wants to give me a word, thank God He'll give me a word. But I'll guarantee to be in line with His written word. Right. May not be specific of His word, but it'll be in line with it. Amen. I had a girl, and then listen, I, I'm, I'm kind of, I'm, I'm not really into my notes real good, but you know that's okay. <laughs> Because this really is along this line. I had a girl that um, was in our church down in, in Greenville. It was from the Greensboro area. And, um, and she had come home one summer. And, you know, she had known we had started church up here. And she would visit her and, her and one of her friends. They would visit here. And she went off and was missing for a while. And she had gone to some school of the prophet somewhere. You know. And um, she came back. And she had this tape. Of all this stuff she was going to do. These prophets had prophesied over her. And she wouldn't know what I thought about it. Now don't ask me. Mm -hmm. right. What I think about it. If you don't want to hear. Right. What I think about it. Right. <coughs> <laughs> and so I said. Oh, well, so, but you know, I, wasn't real, I wasn't real blunt on the front end. Because I, I kind of let her hang herself a little bit. I said you know what. I said let me ask you a question. I said, have you ever in your life, in your walk with the Lord, felt like or thought like or, or had the, the sense you were going to do any of those things? You had? Nope. <laughs> I said, well, you know what I would do? Here's what I would do. I'd put it on the back burner and I'd leave it there. And I wouldn't act on it and I wouldn't do anything with it. Unless the Lord took it off the back burner and really put it in your spirit and you knew it was the Lord telling you to do that, that, that I would not act on that. She got mad. Didn't receive what I said. Got in the car and drove all the way to Greenville, North Carolina. Because she had gone to school in East Carolina. Made an appointment with Pastor John Zabowski. Now that's our church we came out of. Went in and played it for him. Said, I played this for Pastor Ed in Greensboro. He said, Well, what did Pastor Ed say? She told him what I said. He said, Well, it sounded like he gave you good advice. <laughs> I don't think she's like that either. See, people like, sometimes people like to hear things that's, that, that ministers to their, or, or uh, really not ministers, but caters to their emotions and their feelings, but is, there's no faith in it. And see, whatsoever is not a faith is sin. Yeah. You can't act on something. You can't, I'll tell you one time, if somebody comes up and prophesies over you, you're supposed to marry uh, Jimmy, uh, uh, Jimmy John, <laughs> and you and Jimmy John are going to Africa as missionaries, you better take it with you. So they can prophesy over you and tell you when to come home. I don't know. I don't know of personally. Now, I'm, I'm sure it's happened. I don't know of a prophesied marriage that worked out. In other words, somebody prophesied two people together. <clears throat> Amen. Yeah, that's one thing for the Lord. To confer, you know, you make a decision. We're going to get married, and the Lord come out, and somebody come and go and say, you know, you, you, you're doing what the Lord has for you to do. You know, you know, you know. That's one thing. But I, I know there was a couple in the church when we, took, when we came to Greensboro and took this church a number of years ago. There was a couple in there that somebody in that church had prophesied them together. They are now divorced. They never, they never could get along. <laughs> I'm telling you, they just couldn't get along. 
And individually, they're really good people. You know, you know what I'm saying? I mean, you got them by, by themselves, they were, but together, they were just, they just, <laughs> it wasn't good. I, listen, and, 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 and men or women, don't be so doggone gullible <coughs> that someone prophesies you into their life and you fall for it. I knew a guy and um, his family and our family, we know they're, they're famous and have been intertwined in the same, same denomination. Knew of them all my life growing up as a kid. <clears throat> uh, he had um, he had uh, been divorced, gone into sin. I mean, some some pretty nasty sin. We got back to God, serving the Lord, getting restored. Now he's thirty seven, and he starts praying with this fifty seven year old woman. Now she was a cougar before cougar was in. <laughs> oh yeah, <clears throat> and they got to praying. And he he get he get to pray in the Holy Ghost, and she interpreted uh -oh. that they were supposed to get married. Oh yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> They're supposed to, and you know what he did? He did it. Oh man. Now see, if you if you're listening, to, if you're walking in the Spirit and listening to the Lord and living by faith, you understand some things. You just don't do something because somebody prophesies it over you. Right. Yeah. And you got a goosebump when they prophesied it. I've been around demons and gotten goosebumps. Mm. Yeah. Hello? Hey, y'all ever been there? Some, something you get around something that's, you know, you know, some of these movies that come out with, you know, some some of these horror movies are just dumb. But there's some of them that come out that's got devils all over them. Mm -hmm. yeah. And I mean, when it comes on the television, you, it just changes the atmosphere, and you say, ooh, uh, you sense it. Yeah. Now, it's pretty interesting. A lot of Nathan's friends all want to go see some of these paranormal. He won't go. He doesn't like. He doesn't like. He doesn't like the atmosphere. See, he recognizes what it is. It's the demon spirits. He don't like being around it. Yeah. Yeah. We walk by faith, not by feelings. Now, let me say something. If you're not careful over in these areas of training your spirit to walk according to the word and live by faith, what'll happen is that when someone comes along, you know, um, when it's time to live by faith and not by your feelings. Yes. You won't know the difference. Yes. And you won't be able to discern it properly. And you'll fall for stuff. And, and what it will really do is keep you out of faith and keep you out of receiving from God. Because you've been training yourself to go by your feelings. And listening to spiritual matters. And then it comes to live by faith and not by your feelings. Uh, well, I, I must not be God because I don't feel anything. You know what? You don't, you don't base whether you're healed or not on why you feel healed. You don't base whether you're saved or not, it, it depending on if, you're, if you feel saved. Like one preacher said one time, he's seen people come down to the altar and do all kinds of shouting and talking and crying and bawling and squalling and walk out and never serve the Lord another day in life. Other people come down to the altar, it's just as stoic and dry. You think, my God, they didn't get a thing to become the best Christian in the church. We don't walk by our feelings. Amen. So... Let's, let's talk about the simple formula for faith is find the promise in God's word for whatever you're seeking. <laughs> Amen. Find something in the word. You don't, you don't have to feel any special. It's anointing. See, we, we've been so trained in prayer lines, we think if people don't fall, they didn't get anything. Yeah, you're right, unfortunately. I've seen, I've prayed for people who didn't fall, they got healed. Prayed for people who fell on the floor, knocked chairs over, took three arches down with them, and didn't get squat. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hello? Now, I believe in falling on the power. It's a biblical, I mean, and I believe that the power of God can knock people down. Yeah. It's, it's all through the Bible. You know, uh, it's either George or John Wesley, Charles or John Wesley, I'm sorry, back in the 1800s, had meetings where people fell under the power, and they didn't know what it was. As a matter of fact, they, they sat there and they thought, was this the devil or was this God? And they all were all sitting around watching this person who fell under the power. They didn't know what it was. They just knew they were, they, <clears throat> and so they finally said, well, when they come up, when they come out of this, let's listen to the first thing they say. Yeah. And finally, after a little while, the, the, uh, the woman had fallen out. She came and said, glory to God, praise God. He said, it's God. <laughs> they didn't know what, they didn't know what it was. So, you know, I believe that, there, that we have manifestations that way. 
And it's all through the Bible. Mm-hmm. And when Jesus, they came to Jesus to crucify him, he, they said, we see Jesus of Nazareth, he said, I am he, and they all went back. Now that was King James, but they all fell to the ground. Just because he said, I went back. Then there's one place where the guy fell on his face and the power of God stood him up. Yeah. <laughs> Brother Hagin used to say, he'd say, now you, you, see, you think something happens to people falling under the power, wait till the power of God starts standing them back up. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Hallelujah. But we get so trained in some of these things. Amen. <clears throat> we get trained that on the third stanza of, uh, oh Lord, send the power just now. That, you know, we're supposed to have goose bumps and glory bumps and take three laps around the church and that means we got it. That we train ourselves, something. Listen, listen to me now. We school ourselves right out of faith. Mm. Instead of learning that finding a promise in God's word for whatever you're seeking. Believe God's word. Don't allow contradictory circumstances to cause you to waver. And then praise God for the answer. So let's look at finding the promise in God's word. Now, you, now 2 Corinthians chapter 1. We'll look at verses 19 and 20 out of the Weymouth translation. That's the New Testament modern speech by, um, I believe, Francis Weymouth. Now, when we don't have your version, obviously, we're going we're to put them up. Find the promise in God's word for whatever you're asking for. <clears throat> Second Corinthians chapter 1, 1920, Weymouth translation. For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he who was proclaimed among you by us, that is, by Silas and Timothy and myself, did not show himself a waverer between yes and no, but it was and always is yes with him. Now your King James says something like this. Um, it goes on says, uh, for all the promises of God, whatever their number, have their confirmation. That is literally the yes. That's the Weymouth marginal reading. Okay, have you found this yet or you can't find it? Huh? I can't what you're saying. Second Corinthians 1, 19 and 20. Weymouth. Here we go. The 1912, yeah, okay, I see what you're saying, that, that version. Um, but look at this. It said, did not show himself a waverer between yes and no, but it was and always is yes with him. For all the promises of God, whatever their number, have their confirmation in him. For this reason, there, uh, through him, I also our amen acknowledges their truth and promotes the glory of God through our faith. Now, uh, the, it says here, and also our amen acknowledges here, or I'm sorry, uh, whatever their number had their confirmation in him. Now, Weymouth in his margin says this. He says that the word confirmation there is literally the yes. Hmm. Let me say this. Now, if you read King James, um, it'll say, you know, all the promises of God are yea and in him, amen. Now, I grew up Pentecostal. And we would get together and we'd talk about answered prayer and we get real spiritual I remember one of my one of, one of the churches I had the pastor's daughter and we were and I was, I, I'm new saved I'm, I'm talking about new saved I mean they, they had, had hardly got me out of the, the nursery yet to send me home okay I'm new saved and um, she gets real she goes you know God answers prayer three ways I'd never heard this before you know I'm just you know, I'm young and sometimes yes Sometimes no, sometimes maybe. <laughs> now, since then, I've heard a, a vari- variation of that is sometimes wait a while. <laughs> you know. <sighs> and, and uh, <laughs> of course, as a young baby Christian, you start going, well, these people serve, uh, serve God, known God a long time. But I, read, I was reading one day, and I came, he came across King James and, and went, God answered, God, all the promises of God are in him, yes, and in him, amen. But when I read it out of the Weymouth, I like it went through the ceiling. Amen. Uh-huh. Verse 20 in King James says, For all the promises of God are in him, yea, and in him, amen, unto the glory of God. Bless. Now, let me tell you something. There ain't no yes, nor maybe in there. But Weymouth says, All the promises of God, whatever their number, have their confirmation. That is literally the yes in him. And for this reason, through him also our amen. The word amen means so be it in other words when we say amen to something the word of god says to we're saying we're confirming with our mouth that that's true we say so be it 
How many remember the movie Ten Commandments with Cecil B. DeMiles, The Ten Commandments with Yul Brenner and Charlton Heston? And Pharaoh would always go, so let it be written, so let it be done. <coughs> you know? Well, that's kind of what it is. It's been written, and we say, so let it be done, that's our amen. Whatever God's word says, we can, we can access, because let me, here's the key. Let's back up just a little bit. In verse 19, it says, For Jesus Christ, the Son of God, he who was proclaimed among you by us, that is by Silas and Timothy and myself, did not show himself a waverer between yes and no. Now, King James says, um, was, not, uh, was, not, uh, was not yay and uh, yay and nay, but in him it was yay. <clears throat> Wayman says he was not a waverer between yes and no. You hear some people talking one minute, you ask them for the promises of God, and God says yes. Go down the road and ask somebody else, and God told them no to the same promise out of the same book. <laughs> Hello. But I love the way Wayman states it. He says, God did not <clears throat> show himself a waverer between yes and no, but it was, look up there, you've got to look up here, and always is yes with him. Run, run with me, if you will. Oh, to Hebrews chapter 10. <laughs> and I'll find it in Hebrews 10, chapter 10 here in just a minute. Okay, maybe it's not Hebrews 10, or maybe I'm just not finding it because I'm trying to find it too quick. The word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith. Hebrews 4. Huh? Hebrews 4 2. All right, let's, let's look. Why wow, I keep thinking that's in Hebrews 10? Let us, therefore, verse 1, fear, lest the promise being left us of entering into rest, any of you should seem to come short of it. For unto us was the gospel preached as well as unto them, but the word preached did not profit them, not being mixed with faith in them that heard it. Not being mixed with faith. Thank you all of those who call out Hebrews 4. You guys are great. My brain was telling me it was in Hebrews 10 for some reason. So you bring, you can't trust, you, that's why we say we bring your Bible, because you can't trust your mind to always get it right. Right, right, yeah. absolutely. You need to go back. I, I heard Dad Hagen say this. He said, he even, he, he's read the Bible, he read the New Testament through a, a, a hundred and fifty times. And portions of it more than that. And every time he needed something from God, he'd still go get those scriptures out. Yeah. Read them, meditate on them, quote them, feed on them. Amen. Even after all that study. Amen. The word preached did not profit them not being mixed with faith. You got to understand God's word is always yes. God did not promise you anything he did not intend for you to have. God didn't say, by his stripes you were healed, only to tell you, I'm not going to heal you. Never is it he didn't say that the forgiveness of sin is to all who will but believe, and then turn around and say, well, I'm going to send you to hell. You don't get in on it. You don't get in on it. I decided you're just going to go to hell. No. All the promises of God... Now, I, I'm trying to think what other, what other translations, but all the promises of God, whatever their number. Amen. This may, this may be Philip's translation. Whatever their number, find the yes in him and our amen acknowledges the truth of the glory of God in us. Hallelujah. Praise God. That may be J.B. Philip's translation. It says, all the promises of God, whatever their number. That's, for, that's 2 Corinthians 1, 19 and 20, verse 20 actually. 
whatever their number find the yes in him and our amen and acknowledges the truth of the glory of God in us that's not based on your feelings y'all hear mm -hmm. that's not based on how you feel about it that's based on the fact that God's word is forever settled that the promises are yes in him y'all hear you going home mm -hmm. it's true you found that in Phillips you don't have Phillips we don't have Phillips right by there yeah okay yeah it's not Phillips then Okay, Phillips is good. Every promise of God finds his affirmation in him and though and through him can be said the final amen to the glory of God. Well, that's good. That's, that's not the one. I don't know where I got that one. That's a different translation. I'd have to go search it out. But it's still a good one. I guess it could be the Amplified, but I don't know. Anyway, it's, a, it's good. We get the point. All the promises of God are yes. Yeah, yeah. In other words, the minute that God promised it, he already had defaulted to a yes position on it because he promised it yeah that's not <laughs> we'll find it one day I'll, I'll find out what it is and I'll bring it up to you praise God God promised it not based on your feelings <coughs> but on you, you coming in and approaching and receiving on the basis of faith not how you feel well I just feel like it's so well, that don't make it so you ever been around people who said, you know, who said something well I just feel like that's right that don't mean nothing yeah. yeah you gotta come based on faith not on your feelings your feelings are finicky let me just feel like this your feelings are flaky they could be right on today and a mile off tomorrow. <coughs> and you, you know, most of y'all, most people, dated somebody in high school. You seen it in high, well if you didn't, you know somebody. In high school, you're talking about the most flaky feeling stage of life. <laughs> it's high school. Because a guy and a girl could be dating today and they're walking up and down the halls holding hands, kissing, hugging. I mean, dropping syrupy, sugary, but enough to make most people puke <laughs> all over the school. And something happened and they break up that afternoon and the next day they hate each other. Yeah. I mean, she is, you know, she's a skank and he's whatever and they're just running each other down. Well, they won't in love, that's for sure. Yeah. They had feelings. Yeah. Yeah. Feelings are flaky. Uh -huh. Hello? You can come into a service night. We have a Holy Ghost service tonight. Woo! -hoo! And you go out. Oh, I had, we had a, <laughs> oh gosh. We had a guy who used to go to our church a number of years ago. And, and bless his heart. I mean, he's a, he just a, it's a, he's a good hearted person. Mm -hmm. But just won't. Just wasn't hundred percent with it in every arena of life, and uh, and his wife was worse. She was a granola Christian. That's fruits, nuts, and flakes all packaged together in the same box. Okay, I'm telling you. And uh, but you know they had left the church, and we you know they'd visit every once in a while. I, you know we just we just love on them. You just love on them because you, you want to help people. Well, they had some guy show up in town. He did like an eight, six to nine week meeting of laughing every service, uh -huh. morning at morning and night. They just went over there and laughed every service. That's all they did was get together and laugh. They're laughing in the Holy Ghost. Anyway. There's more to the Holy Ghost than everybody laying in the floor laughing for nine weeks. Uh -huh, right. But you can get a crowd with, with, with stuff like that. Oh, yeah. So he calls me up one day. Laughing. In the middle of the day. Have you, I just came out of the service. <laughs> Have you been over? <laughs> you need to get over here. <laughs> he just says, changing my life. Okay, all right. Yeah, great. Wonderful. So on three weeks after the meeting was over, he looked like Pigpen from Peanuts Gang. 
I don't mean dirty. I mean the cloud yeah, over all over his head. Now he had laughed for nine straight weeks. I mean, he was get, cutting out of work somehow to get in the morning services and like laugh in the morning and laugh at night for nine weeks. Laugh, talking about how 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 great the Holy Ghost is. Well, I believe in the Holy Ghost. I believe in manifestations of the Holy Ghost. I believe there's Holy Ghost laughter. Uh -huh. When the Lord turned again the captivity of Zion, we were like them that dreamed. Then was our mouth filled with laughter and our tongue was singing. Where they said among the heathen, the Lord has done great things for them. He, Where he hath done great things for us. 126th Psalm. Yeah, I believe that. But not every service for nine weeks, morning and night. That's all you do. Everybody's drunk on the Holy Ghost. Like, not, God's bigger than that. <clears throat> Let me say this. God's not going to just take a spiritual gift just to throw a spiritual gift at you. Spiritual gifts ministered to the church will be used to draw you into maturity through the word. They'll draw you to the word. So you can grow up. Amen. I said amen. And um, well, my point was, after nine weeks of laughing, it only took him three weeks to get back to the pig pen, peanuts gang status. That dark cloud of depression mm -hmm. all over him. I mean, he walked in the room and put all the light out. And he, cause he came by or something. I saw him. Either I saw him out in public or something. I said, how you doing? Oh, oh will not you just laugh? I'm like a, a hyena three, just a few weeks ago. <laughs> Holy Ghost has just changed your life with all that laughter. You know? See, feelings. Yep. Feelings. Now, you can be manipulated this is more practical than it is, so just, just enjoy it. Yeah, it's good. You can be manipulated through your feelings faster than anything. Yeah. Amen. You get over to see, you see why? Because you're building over your emotions, you're not building in the word, you're building over in the soul. <clears throat> and you can get big crowds. Let me tell you, you can get a big crowd. They had this woman come out of uh, Brazil about 10 years ago. Mm -hmm. There was gold dust everywhere, supposedly. She'd be ministering and gold dust would start appearing on people's Bibles. And the only thing that gold dust did was get people to give her a bunch of money for her ministry. It's supposed to be a sign. What, what was the sign for? It wasn't confirming the word. There's no word about gold dust. If you read the apostles, they went everywhere preaching the, Lord, preaching the word, the Lord working with them, confirming the word with signs following. What were those signs? Same ones that followed Jesus. Right. Healing. Healing. Casting out devils. Amen. Lame being made of blind eyes open. I mean, remember um, when the disciples of John came to Jesus and said, Are you the one? John, our master sent us to find out if you're the one or should we look for another? He said, you go tell John that the blind see, the lame walk, the deaf hear, and the poor have the gospel preached to them. Didn't say anything about gold dust. See, we get caught up in stupid stuff. We get emotional about it. Now, I had a friend. We had a, we, we had a minister come in. He, he called me. He was in the States. And we had met him before. And he wanted to come minister. And I said, well, come on. You know, you're up in, you're up in Virginia. Come on down. You, he ministered tonight. So we had lunch that day. He got to talk to me. He said, you know, he said that woman was up there at this camp meeting. And said there were 3,000 people in the meeting. And they just poured. Let me, let me say something here. If people can have gold dust appear to, to support the, to prove their ministry is valid, I think we can just collect and support their ministry without anybody having to give. Yeah. <laughs> if you can get a manifestation of gold dust all over everybody's Bibles, and then they're going to why, why, why even bother giving? Just 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 collect all the gold dust and give it back to her. Giving mm -hmm. huge offerings. Next day, he said. The next day, some guy came in, and, and, I, and, and um, he said he preached. He said he preached an awesome sermon. He said what she preached, he couldn't even follow. It wasn't even. It wasn't even biblical, hardly. He said he had eighty people there. Eighty people. See, we see we get caught up in stuff. Our emotions get involved. We get ooh gold dust. Christians. Do you rem 
remember in the uh, fifth chapter, uh, I, folks, you can just forget my notes. They just got, they've been blown out the front door. <laughs> I believe maybe the 8th chapter, the book of Acts. Starting down in verse 5. I see, I'll, I'll, I'll reverse this nine times. Out. I'll call it the 5th chapter, the verse, the 8th verse. It's the 8th chapter, the 5th verse. Philip went down to Samaria and preached Christ unto them, the people with giving heed with one accord, both hearing and seeing the miracles which he did. For unclean spirits, crying with loud voice, came out of many. They were possessed with them. Many taken with palsies were lame were healed. There was great joy in the city. No gold dust. Mm -hmm. yeah. Let me say something. She died. Yeah. She died. They called it. They were calling it a revival. She was bringing people to all kinds of deception. And all kinds of money was going into her hands. Uh, let's just everybody just take your Bibles, bring them up here, dump them in the offering bucket, and we'll just give her the gold dust. That's how I feel about it. Well, I give her an offer. She got a supernatural offer from the Lord. No, all this is happening. Everybody start throwing money. People, don't you just throw your money just because you, you, anyway. But there was a certain man, verse 9, called Simon, which before time in the same city used sorcery and bewitched the people of Samaria, giving out that he was some great one. Listen to verse 10. To whom they all gave heed from the least to the greatest, saying, this man is the great power of God. And yet the Bible says he was bewitching them. And to him they had regard because, uh, because that of long time he had bewitched him with sorceries. They all thought it was God. What happens? They gain control. <clears throat> People let their emotions, their feelings get involved. They don't know what the first thing about being faith, being God or not. They don't know how to judge things. And I'm over on this because, listen, there's a lot of, stuff, a lot of things happen. And people start giving into that. And like I said earlier, the point, the point we're kind of hammering here is this. If you train your spirit to respond out of feelings, yeah. it's going to be hard for you to respond out of faith and not your feelings. You're going to want to feel something. You're going to want to feel a goosebump. You're going to want there to be a, uh, a sign. Now, growing up classical Pentecostal, we would fleece in a heartbeat. I put a fleece before the Lord. No, you didn't. <laughs> Did you go out in your backyard and take some lamb fleece and hang it on a rack? Hello. And let's face it, Gideon wasn't in faith. Yeah. I mean, God did what he said to do, and he turned around and made him, do it, he made him take another step up. That wasn't a faith act. Thomas says, except I see the print nails in his hand and thrust my hand into his side, I won't, be, I won't believe. Jesus appears and says, stick your finger in my hand, put your hand on my side, and be not faithless but believing. But because you've seen, you believe, but blessed is the man who has not seen that believes. <clears throat> we need to train our spirit that just because God said it is so. Yeah. Whether you feel, you feel anything or not. Amen? Whether you feel anything or not. It doesn't matter whether you feel anything. It doesn't matter if you feel dry. Yeah. You ever prayed and felt dry? Sometimes we don't think we've prayed effectively unless we feel some kind of woo. <clears throat> I've seen people go woo and then go out and find out they're out laying out naked in the moonlight with drinking wine coolers with a relative. Male. And they male. In the moonlight. Remember that song, Dancing in the Moonlight? I don't know what they were doing. Whatever they were doing, they were doing it in the moonlight. And then going, woo, in church. <coughs> holy Ghost. Yeah, it, it was a ghost. I don't know about what holy was. It was a devil. Amen. We train our spirits to be moved by our feelings instead of by the word. If God said it, that's it. When God put it in the book, his answer was yes. Hmm. Now, sure, they're conditional. The number one condition is you meet them on the grounds of faith. Mm -hmm. Amen? Yep. There's other conditions in certain things. I mean, giving. Paul writing to the church at Corinth makes it very clear. He, he sows sparingly, shall he reap also sparingly. Yeah. 
Not let every man give according as he purposeth in his own heart, not grudgingly nor necessity, for God loves a cheerful giver. Amen. It makes it very clear <coughs> that the you know uh, the the manner in which you you sow is the manner in which you'll reap. But don't you give because somebody came in and gave you some some crazy whacked out. I got a thousand fold anointing on me tonight. And you get all stirred up in your emotions and feelings. You you're not giving in faith. You're giving in feeling. Get a grunt. <laughs> or help me, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. All right. <clears throat> but whatever you're asking God for, God already says yes. Yeah. If it's from his word. It's not, it's not going to be yes if it's not in his word. God came to preach one day and said, I want you to agree with me. He said, what for? He said, I want you to agree with me that God will give me uh, that man's wife. You can't agree with somebody for that. Number one, it's sin. He who looks on his neighbor's wife to lust out there has committed adultery. You can't look at someone else's wife and start believing God for them. And then you want to get other people to agree with you. Now I understand why the unspoken request became so popular. <laughs> Hello? Agree with me. What is he agreeing with? Just I said unspoken. Okay, I'll agree with you. Whatever you're asking God for, you'll get it. And they're believing God for somebody else's wife. Hello. And wonder, hey, what if they're believing for their neighbor to fall dead because they don't like them? <laughs> and you're going to take part into it and agree with them. I agree that whatever they're praying for, they get. And that's why I don't, I don't participate in unspoken requests. That number one is really no such thing. <laughs> so find a promise in God's word because what's the answer to God's promises? Yes. yes. It's not sometimes yes, sometimes no, and sometimes maybe. Yes. Now, it might be if you pray according to the word, it's yes. If you don't pray according to the word, it's probably not no. It's probably stupid. <laughs> I'm not under obligation to answer prayers that don't line up with the word. God's not. Quite frankly, he won't. Amen. You can't believe God's going to do things for you. This word won't, doesn't promise you. And specifically states not to do. Hello. There's a lot of junk. Going, I mean, there's a lot of junk going on. But some couple came to a pastor. I friend I know wanted marriage, not marriage counseling, uh, counseling for their relationship. He got them in the office, found out they're just living together. Not even married. <clears throat> he said, well, the problem is you're living in sin. <laughs> that's, your, that's your relationship problem. You're living in sin. They said, oh, no, no, we're under grace. That don't matter. He said, if you believe that, I can't help you. You probably ought to find another place to go worship. You can't. How can you help somebody violate the word of God? Well, we're going to try to help your relationship. I mean, I'll help your relationship. Stop sleeping together. <laughs> Get out of sin. If you're burning that much for each other, get married. Yeah. Yeah. If it was two guys, I'd cast the devil out of them. Yeah. <laughs> two girls, I'd do the same thing. It's a lying devil. Yeah. Unclean spirit, actually. Yeah. I said unclean spirit. Unclean spirit in the Bible is, 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 a, is a sexual perversion spirit. Yeah. 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 Remember the madman of the Gadarenes? He cut himself. See, some people get pleasure out of cut, get sexual pleasure out of cutting themselves. It's, it's weird. I would say, well, that's weird. That's devils. I said, it's devils. I need the devil cast out of them or demon. Amen. The pastor, you shouldn't talk about it. Well, I guess it's in the Bible. Yeah, right. Go ahead. I want you to agree with, I'm not, we're going to agree with the word. You're going to learn to live according to the word. Don't come ask me to agree with you about some dumb thing the Bible don't tell you you can have, actually tells you you can't have. Hello? You can't have my wife. And I don't even need the Lord's help on that one. 
I will hurt you. <laughs> Hello? I remember Brenda Timberlake. How many, how many people have ever heard of Mac and Brenda Timberlake? Yeah. Now, now, Brother Mac's going home to be with the Lord. And, and, we, and we knew them. They, they were friends with our pastors in Greenland. So we knew Mac, Mac and Brenda. They're, they're good people. And she's, and she's still uh, taking, running the church even though he's gone. And, uh, and, and, and you, if, if you're white, you don't understand all this. Sometimes black culture has stuff we just don't understand. Okay? Well, see, in the black church, if, they, if, if a man wanted to have relations with a woman, they'd just walk up and, and they would do it secretively. They'd shake their hand, but they'd put their middle finger in the palm of their hand when they shook hands. And that was, you know, now I want to have sex with you. And then they, 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 it was being done. And, you know, and then they could decide whether they were going to do it or not. A guy did that to him with Max standing right beside her. Walked up at the service, shook her hand, did the finger in the middle, of, and she stopped him. And she just looked at him. And I love Mint Brenda Tipper. She, she was bold. She said, don't you act like a dog. If you want something, ask for it. <laughs> Into that. <laughs> that was it for that one. <laughs> oh, my. Oh, my. Well, you can't ask for things that the Bible don't promise you. Yeah. Amen. But what the Bible does promise you, it's not based on how you feel about it. It's based on what the Word says. You don't have, I'm telling you, I've known people who, who were trying to believe God or, or actually probably had the faith to believe God, but because they didn't have a feeling, didn't know how to release their faith and get it. They're, so, they're looking for some kind of feeling. They're looking for a confirmation feeling. Yeah. I'll tell you something, folks. Faith stands and stares feelings and adversity to the ground and it doesn't care whether it feels like it or not it knows it's so yeah. Yeah. God's word God promised you when God promised it the answer was yes as soon as you met and this is when I say meet the condition the number one condition to meet to me is on the basis of receiving by faith that's the first condition now sometimes there are other conditions um, living long children obey your parents and Lord for this is the this is right and the first commandment with promise that it may be well with thee that thou mayest live long on the earth oh, honor thy father and mother that it may be well with thee that thou mayest live long on the earth well see there's another condition just besides just receiving it by faith you got to honor your parents now there's a YouTube video out there Brooks Hunt posted it yesterday this girl went on a rant about her parents on Facebook. And I am telling you, Dad took care of that problem. <laughs> he took his 45 with the hollow tip point shells, rounds, and he unloaded a nine round magazine to that computer. And then posted it on her Facebook and changed the password so everybody out there can see her Facebook. She can't do a thing about it. Because she, she cussed and talked about how bad her parents was. He said, your life's about to change. <laughs> you won't be getting on Facebook anymore. Boom, 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 boom. So, and your mama said, that because what you said about her, put one in there for her. Boom. And I got two more. Boom, boom. <laughs> that can, she, would, she would not be on Facebook. <laughs> you got to go look at it. He was hot. And what made me say that? <clears throat> anyway, I know we're kind of run, we're kind of rambling, but not really rambling. I'm trying to get get you to understand. There are things that we have to put into practice on a regular basis in our life, so that we're not governed by our feelings and governed by emotions and governed by things. We have to be consistent with the word. We have to be consistent with the word, and and, and understand if God said it, He meant for you to have it. I don't know where the theological perspectives came from. That God would promise us things and then wouldn't, wouldn't keep his word to us. I don't know where that came from. I don't know where we just made up stuff. God answers prayers three ways. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes maybe. It's not in the Bible that God answers prayer that way. So I just made that up. I had somebody we knew that um, told me God showed them that he's the father 
and he knows best. And if you come to the word and if you meet the conditions of the word, he may know that you don't need that and so he won't give it to you. Now how? <clears throat> I said how? Can you have any confidence in anything God says if you meet the conditions of the word, walk in light of the word, and then he goes, ah, I'm just not going to give you that. You don't need it because I'm a good father and I know you don't need it. Let me say this. Every good and every perfect gift cometh down from the Father above and who there's no variable, there's no shadow of turning. If, he did, if, it, what, if it was going to hurt you, he wouldn't have promised it to you in the first place. That's some of that government interference thinking. You saw with a girl over in Staley County went to school with her homemade lunch. Turkey and ham sandwich, fruit and something else and the person from the University of North Carolina at Chapel Hill food program came and said it did not meet the nutritional value and made, her, made the kid eat some chicken nugget thing from the school cafeteria that had some vegetables in it. Because they know but Listen, that, that parent knows what's, knows what's good, what was good for their kid. There's some, um, some whack out. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. It's not enough, but it's almost enough to make a preacher cuss. <laughs> See, we just make stuff up because it sounds good. And the church does the same thing. We don't have answers for stuff. We just make stuff up. Yeah. God answers prayers three ways. Sometimes yes, sometimes no. You find me that in the Bible. Come on. Find it. I mean, I'll help you out though. You can use an a, 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 a electronic concordance. It'll help you find it in about two seconds flat. It'll come back, no results. Zero results for God answers prayer. Sometimes yes, sometimes no, sometimes maybe. Because it ain't in there. Mm -hmm. Now, put in there God answers prayer, you know, put, whether what 2 Corinthians says, you'll find that. 2 Corinthians, you know, 1, 19 and 20. When you, listen, you can have, when you understand that God promises you stuff and he doesn't change his mind and he doesn't lie and he meant for you to have it, believe God's word. You, it's, it, when, you, when you settle it that God meant what he said and said what he meant it's not a matter if you feel like God's going to do it the Bible says he's going to do it believe him mm -hmm. amen yeah. I'm trying to, I've kind of stayed on some of these things and, and went off on some rabbit trails and I'm probably going to have to quit because y'all hear you going home Real. Mark, Mark 9, 23, Jesus said this, if you can believe all things, it's possible to him that believes. It's not a matter that God means it. It's a matter of can you believe that God, can, that God will do what he said he would do. Being fully, the Bible says Abraham was fully persuaded that what God had promised he was able also to perform. That's the key. Not how you feel. Hello. Have you ever felt Unwhatever, unlovely, unloved, unmarried, unsaved. You get down a whole list of things you may not feel like. It doesn't change the fact. And just because you don't feel masculine, don't mean you're a girl locked in a male body. That's a devil. It's a lying devil. Are you here? Just because you don't feel feminine, don't mean you're a man locked up in a girl's body. That's a lying devil. If anybody else had done what Ch Chastity Bono did, they would have locked them up for mental illness. Yes. <coughs> Hello? If we started cutting off, if we, if we started going to doctors and had our nose and ears and fingers cut off because we felt they, were, they, they, they weren't supposed to be on us, they'd, lock that per they'd say that person has mental problems. They would. But because, you know, homosexuality and lesbianism and all that stuff is being promoted today in society, they champion her, <laughs> her. She's not a him. I don't care what they do. She will always be a her. What do you mean? Because the second they stop putting the drugs in her, she'll, she reverts back to what she is, a girl. Yeah. The estrogens will take over. You can't get rid of that. You can't put enough steroids in it, her to make her a him. You can't do it. 
You hear you going home. Yeah. She's going to be a girl always. Yeah. And just because you feel like feel something doesn't mean you are. Yeah. If you wake up tomorrow morning and quack, don't mean you're a duck. <laughs> It just means you might be going out for the Geico commercials. <laughs> or Affleck. Affleck. Nah, Affleck. Hello? We cannot allow how we feel to govern how we live. Faith didn't, faith didn't move by how you feel. I'm not moved by how I feel. Boy, you're going to have adversity that's going to give your feelings a fit. You have circumstances that give your feelings a fit. You better know that it's what the Word says. The Word's true and the Word's always true. And God's always said yes to His Word. It doesn't matter how I feel about it. Amen? All right. I'm going to come out and pick up and finish this next week. And uh, but Thomas was moved by feelings. Amen.